Hi, everyone. My name is Lakshmi Kannan, and I'm the general manager for Cockroach Cloud, which is Cockroach DB as a service. Now, one question we get a lot from our customers is, you know, I have a, a new application. I'd like to use Cockroach DB for it. Should I use Cockroach Cloud, the cloud database, or should I try to host it myself? Um, and you know, hosting here can mean that you're either running CockroachDB in a data center that you or your company might own, or it could mean that you are running it in a cloud provider of your choice, you know, DigitalOcean, AWS, GCP, whatever that may be. In this video, we'll walk through how to think about that decision um, and three main factors you should think about when you're uh, deciding between a cloud database or a self-hosted database. So there are three main factors you want to think about when you are evaluating the cost of owning any piece of software. Um, sometimes this is called total cost of ownership, or TCO. Um, and you know, it, it broadly applies to any kind of software. In this particular case, we'll apply it to databases. So the, the three factors are, one, hardware costs, two, software costs, and three, broadly what we call operational costs. Let's dig a little deeper into each of these. So let's start with hardware costs. The first part of hardware costs is machines. Servers, these are you know, your physical machines if you own a data center. These are virtual machines if you're running on the cloud. But you know, these can be your EC2 instances, your NGCP, your N1 standard series. Uh, it really depends on what kind of machines you end up using for your workload, but that's the first piece of hardware. The second piece of hardware is storage costs. Presumably, when you're running a database, you want to store your data. So you want to pick the right kind of storage for this. Um, that may be persistent disks in GCP. Um, Internally at Cockroach, uh, Cockroach Labs, for Cockroach Cloud, we use um, elastic block storage in um, AWS. This is EBS volumes. Um, and this is a pretty big uh, you know, part of your uh, storage costs. And if you're running backups, for instance, you also you, know, you might want a slightly cheaper, less performant type of storage, maybe something like S3 buckets or GCS buckets in GCP. But you know, all of that is uh, comprised as part of your storage costs. The third piece of hardware is uh, what we call IOPS. We're specifically calling out IOPS here because it ends up being a, a pretty big part of your hardware costs, um, especially in AWS. So again, internally at Cockroach Labs, we use uh, you know, provisioned IOPS IO1, but that's kind of a third piece of hardware. The fourth piece of hardware costs are load balancers. Load balancers can be application load balancers. It can be network load, ba load balancers. These aren't super expensive, but it's just another line item to keep track of in your hardware costs. Then we move on to egress and ingress costs. So this is the uh, you know, cost of data traffic. It, sometimes that's data in and out of a cloud provider. It can also be data within regions. Depending on your application traffic, this may be a small part of your bill. Um, it may not actually be that significant, but it can also be very large, again, depending on your uh, you know, particular business needs. So something to keep track of. The thing about egress and ingress costs is that it is notoriously difficult to predict it. Um, you know, the cloud providers will give you some sorts of calculator um, that you can try but it's pretty hard to get it right. Um, so something to keep in mind when you look at your uh, monthly bill. And then the final category is kind of what I call a miscellaneous category. Um, this is particularly relevant if you're running your database in, say, a Kubernetes service like GKE in Google or um, EKS, which is the elastic Kubernetes service, you know, a managed service. Um, the Kubernetes master node ends up being a pretty uh, you know, sizable chunk of your hardware cost. So it's another thing to keep in mind. This is not meant to be a comprehensive set of all of your hardware costs, but this is a pretty good starting point and definitely covers the most common types of hardware costs when you're trying to run a database. All right, so next, let's move on to software costs. Now, software costs are actually pretty straightforward, right? This is the license you pay um, if you want to run a database yourself. So again, let's take the example of CockroachDB. Um, if you want to run CockroachDB in, let's say, GCP, you're still going to be paying for the license. This again applies broadly to you know, most kinds of self-hosted software. You're still paying for the license. The nice thing about this when you're running a cloud database is that the license cost is usually baked into the cloud uh, price itself, right? Like usually when you pay for a cloud product like Cockroach Cloud, you're not paying separately for the hardware or software. It's kind of just part of the overall price. It's already baked in, so that's nice. And finally, the third category of costs I want to talk about um, is what I call operational costs. Operational costs are often the hardest to quantify uh, because it's as, as we'll see as we walk through some examples, it's hard to put a specific number on it. Um, you know, when you talk about hardware or software, there's a, there's a number associated with it, right? You can look at your you know, bill, or you can look at how much your data center costs, um, or you can look at your kind of software license bill. And there's, it's, pretty hard, it's, it's pretty easy to kind of have a number. Um, but operational costs are some of these kind of nebulous, more soft costs. Um, kind of let's, let's dive deeper into what that might mean. The first type of operational cost is usually um, kind of human capital costs. And this simply means, it's the team of engineers or team of site reliability engineers who are going to be on call for the service. 
when you have a production database or really any kind of production software, um, you're likely to have somebody on call 24-7 to you know, monitor and maintain that. Um, and this is particularly challenging when you're talking about a, a you know, complicated piece of software like a distributed database. And you know, for a cloud provider, usually there's uh, a team of site reliability engineers who are you know, solely responsible for keeping that system uh, running. Uh, so at Cockroach Labs, for instance, we have a team of SREs who are on call 24-7 to monitor and maintain our, um, our cloud customers' databases. The second type of operational cost is what I call um, opportunity cost. Now, opportunity cost is a somewhat nebulous concept, um, but I like to think of it as the cost of whatever it is that you give up to do something. Now, that's still abstract, so let's you know, break it down with a specific example. If you're running a production database, you certainly want backups, right? And you want to have a disaster recovery process. And you know, you, maybe you're running uh, daily backups, maybe you're running them twice a day or hourly, depending on your business needs. And you know, you need to have somebody who is responsible for ensuring that the backups are running. And if they're not running, then there's you know, alerting or monitoring set up to ensure that they continue to run. Usually, this person probably comes from your core engineering team. Um, so you know, the time that they would spend setting up the backups and ensuring that it's working appropriately is time that they're not building the core application, which is presumably the core part of your business, right? When you think about what it is that you're spending time on, um, as a company, you always want to be spending time on the core kind of competitive advantage of your company, which is serving your customers. Um, and in most cases, in the mo case of at least most of our customers for Cockroach TV, um, running a database is not their core competitive advantage, right? Um, they, they usually want to serve their customers. Um, so think of opportunity cost as any time you spend time away, especially your precious engineering time, away from building you know, core applications. It's hard to quantify this, which is why I said this is you know, a hidden cost and companies can kind of skip through it or glaze through it or frankly just forget about it. Um, but always keep track of what you're spending your time on. And things like backups, things like provisioning uh, machines um, are a pretty important part of this, this whole concept of opportunity cost. And the third and kind of final category within operational costs is what I call support, support and kind of domain expertise, right? Again, if you're running a production database, um, you're going to want to have some level of familiarity with the database and kind of so you can debug when issues inevitably arise. Now, the question you want to ask yourself is, you know, do you want to build that expertise in-house or do you want to, you know, pick a cloud database and, and not worry too much about the expertise. Of course, you still have to know a little bit about the database, but you know, you're not spending all your time thinking about what is the right kind of machine, what is the right kind of storage I should be using, um, you know, how should I think about replication or sharding or scaling. Um, these are all things that are usually taken care of by a cloud database like Cockroach Cloud, uh, but if you're hosting it yourself, you have to you know, become a bit of a domain expert in some of these things. Um, and then. The other side of it is when there are issues that come up, um, if you're using a cloud database, usually there's some you know, baseline level of support that comes up. You can open a support ticket. Um, you can also sometimes purchase higher levels of support. Um, there's probably kind of a technical person in the company that would help you solve some of these problems um, versus if you're running it yourself, that's really kind of all on you. And, and it, again, kind of ties back into that concept of opportunity cost, right? You're, are you, you know, use, utilizing your precious core uh, product and engineering resources to debug some of these issues or are they kind of focusing on the business? So that's kind of what, what operational costs are. Um, again, to kind of summarize operational costs, it's broadly kind of the hidden and not so hidden costs of running a database yourself. So it can be support, it can be the time you spend away from your core business, um, and it can also be uh, just human capital and finding the right kind of skills to run this. All right, so let's recap. So we talked about three factors to think about when you are you know, deciding between whether you want to run a cloud database or um, host it yourself. Um, and the three factors that we discussed are hardware costs, software costs, and operational costs. Under hardware costs, we talked about compute, uh, like the actual virtual machines, storage, um, IOPS. We talked about egress and ingress costs, load balancers, and some of the miscellaneous costs like your Kubernetes master node. And then under software costs, we talked about the actual license, which is a key part of uh, you know, just running a, a database yourself. And then under operational costs, we talked about uh, becoming a domain expert and kind of the support, uh, support costs that come with it, um, the opportunity costs, which is the time you spend away from your core business. And finally, we talked about um, human capital costs. This is hiring the right kind of SRE talent or engineering talent to be on call. So we encourage you to think about all of these kinds of um, hidden and not so hidden costs when you uh, find yourself asking the question of, should I go with a cloud database or a self-hosted database? Thank you for watching.